Hi everyone and welcome to Don't Waste Your Money episode 3. This has been a really popular series so I'm hoping it continues that way as I keep saving all of my product fails and throwing them in this series. We've got another six products that have seriously underwhelmed me and I don't think they're worth your cash to feature in today's video. We do have Ralph chewing on his teething bone behind me so you may hear a few bangs in the background. It's incredibly annoying but he's so adorable I'm just not going to stop him. Let's get on with today's video. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. I would love it if at some point in this video you are finding it helpful. Please consider clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. So to feature in this video, you need to at least tick one of the next three boxes. So you need to either be slightly underwhelming for me, I think there are better products out there that you could spend your money on, just not suit me personally and if that is the case I will let you know if I feel like somebody else may like the product it's just not for me or three just simply bad 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 and should never have been released in the first place and there are a couple of those in this video Ooh, let's get on with it so Ralphie just wanted to say hi he wanted a bit of a love <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always game. He's growing so much. He's put two kilos on in the last month. So he's going to be a big dog, aren't you? You're going to be a big dog? Yes, I know. You want to go down? Please. <laughs> So we're going to kick it off with one that I've actually tried in a get ready with me. And um, yeah, it didn't go well. Did not go well at all. So this is from Revolution and it's the Balm Glow. I've actually bought a couple of shades of this. I'll show you those in just a second. I believe this is supposed to be a dupe for the Jones Road Miracle Balm. I can't tell you if that is actually the case because I've never tried that particular brand. So yeah, I don't know. But if it is actually the case, I'm so glad I didn't go the extra mile and fork out my hard-earned money on the Jones Rome Miracle Balm because I wouldn't like that either. This is just horrific. Again, bought this in two different shades. So I have the shade Natural Nude, which I believe is supposed to go all over the skin to just give you that more awake, more lively sort of look. Just really refresh the skin. Didn't do that for me. And also I have the shade Peach Bliss, which is more of a blush shade absolutely glorious tone to this. It's peachy, it's corally, it's just everything I would want from a blush. In colour anyway, I mean the formula sucks but the colour is really really nice. I am not holding back in this video. I really don't like this. It definitely lives up to the word in the title glow. This is super super glowy to the point where this actually looks wet on the cheek. But not only does it look wet, and I didn't mind that by the way, I don't mind the amount of glow. It does say that it's a glowy product so I can't hold that against it. Totally didn't mind that. I like a glowy blush. But this looked wet and it was wet. This does not sink into the skin. It does not dry down. I have tried to apply the smallest amount. I've applied a little bit more. I've tried to pound this into the skin with a damp blending sponge. I've tried to use my fingers. I've tried to use a brush. Nothing works for me. Wet sticky, not even a gust of wind and all of my hair is stuck to my face. Who wants that? I just look greasy. Just, oh, no, 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 no. This aggravated me, not to the point of infuriation, but I just don't understand. If any of you love this product, if you can make it work, please let me know what I'm doing wrong because I've got them now. I mean, I might as well get my money's worth out of them. Unless I hear from you, these are going in the naughty bin because I just, I just think they're dreadful. <laughs> absolutely dreadful. If you haven't seen the Get Ready With Me, which was the first impressions review of lots of different products, including the Balm Glows that I've just spoken about, I will link it up here for you so you can see my gut reaction on the products. So because I've never tried anything remotely similar to these in the past, I don't have an alternative that is better value or that I think you should buy instead of this. 
So I'm just gonna dodge that part of this video for this product, we're gonna move on to the next. Next product I want to talk about, I already know that I'm in the minority here, the majority of people absolutely adore this next product, so I want to make that very clear before I go into why it does not work for me, because it may work for you, but if your skin is anything like mine, I would save your money on this product. I didn't buy this product for such a long time and um, it was a cult favourite for so many people wanting to prime the eyelids for your eyeshadow to just wipe out any pigmentation on the eyelids and to create an amazing canvas for your eyeshadow to adhere to and to stop any unwanted oils seeping through the eyeshadow throughout the day and creating creasing. Unfortunately, because my eyelids are incredibly dry, this product didn't work for me. It's from MAC and it's the Pro Longwear Paint Pot. I got the shade Painterly, which is the correct shade for me. The shade was amazing, absolutely fantastic. It's quite a nice consistency as well. It's a semi-dry consistency, more like a putty consistency in my opinion. A little bit creamy when you warm it up between your fingers, which is what I like to do before I apply anything. But again, I've tried this so many different ways. I've tried to overly treat my eyelids before application and uh, when I'd done that for a few days I started getting a little bit of puffiness around my eyes so I knew that was the wrong thing to do. Really nice shade of product and it definitely has the pigmentation so it does cover over any colour issues, any sort of imperfections that you have on the lid, it is excellent at that, but for some reason this showed up every single patch of dryness, even dryness that I didn't know was there, this showed up and just made me look around about 95 years old once I got it on, which I wasn't intending, that wasn't the final look that I was wanting to achieve, so eventually I've had to knock this one to the curb and kick this one to the curb. <laughs> Anyway, it's a definite no for me. It may be a no for you. Let me know if you love this. Let me know if this doesn't work for you, if you've tried it in the past. The eyeshadow primer, I think, is better value for money for those of you with dry eyelids. I would always, especially if you're wanting the same pigmentation that the MAC Paint Pot will give you, the P. Louise base is just second to none, in my opinion. This is such a great product. I'm not sure if this has been discontinued. I do know that P. Louise has set up a different brand now, so maybe that particular brand has a new eyelid primer. I will have a look and I will get my hands on one and let you know my opinions on that one, but my favourite ride or die eyeshadow primer has to be the original P. Louise base because it is just out of this world for pigmentation, for grip, for absolutely everything. If this one has been discontinued, I also really like the Urban Decay um, Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I've got the shade original, but I do believe they do this in other shades as well if you are wanting to cover over any pigmentation. Moving on to another product that I featured on this channel previously. In fact, it was in the same video, I think. I haven't checked, don't quote me on this, but I think it was in the same video, the try on video, the get ready with me as the Revolution Balm Glow. This is actually by Revolution Pro, a sister company of Makeup Revolution, and uh, it's their colour corrector. This is the Ultimate Radiant Colour Corrector, and it's in the shade Peach. I mean, this has never been peach in its life. Have you ever seen a colour like this described as peach? This is full on orange and that is the only reason why I don't like this product and it didn't work for me. Again, the formula is fantastic. This may be your saviour if you have dark circles underneath your eyes, if you have a darker skin tone than mine. Anybody with my skin tone or fairer, dodge this with a barge pole. This is not going to be for you. If you've already bought this product, this may be great for covering a bruise if you have any bruises, or you may have to resort, like I have, to mixing this in with a little bit of concealer and lightening it that way to use as a colour corrector. As it stands, this is pretty much useless. It makes me look like I've been punched in the face. Not the overall look that I like to achieve on a daily basis. Yeah, it's just not good. <laughs> 
definitely not good. Revolution and Revolution Pro are usually really good at bringing out products with a diverse spectrum of shades. They never miss out the fairest of the fair. They never miss out the deepest of the deep. And it's a wide spectrum, not all shades, like a lot of brands, they bring out a wide spectrum, but 90% of the shades are targeted at that mid-range. Revolution don't do that, and I always appreciate that. Plus, their website labels their shades really, really well. So they'll tell you what skin tone you need to be, but also what undertone that product will suit best. So you can pick a shade online and very rarely get it wrong. Unfortunately, they've not lent that practice to this particular product. It needs another three shades of this, in my opinion. One deeper for the deepest of the deep. This one will be for mid to deep skin tones. They'll need a slightly fairer one in a peach tone for fairer to light skin tones and then maybe a pinky one for really fair skin tones. And I think this would be perfect. If this was the correct shade, I would love it at the moment. It's a no, it's a no, no. So I always like to give alternatives around the same price point as the products that I've just bashed. So if the products that I really don't like that I think there are better alternatives out there is affordable, I'll give an affordable alternative. I'm not gonna give you a really high-end product for a product that is affordable. So um, my affordable alternatives for this one, which I believe are better for me, just for shade, because like I've said, I love the formula of this, it's just the shade that doesn't work for me, is from the sister company of Revolution Pro. It's actually from Revolution, and this is the Conceal and Correct, again, in the shade Peach. Can we just have a look at the difference between both of these products? Both of these are supposed to be in the shade Peach. I mean, come on. There is no comparison. One is Peach, one is Tangerine. There is no lying about this. However, Although I absolutely love the Conceal and Correct in the shade Peach, if the Ultimate Radiant Colour Corrector in from Revolution Pro was the same shade as this, this would be my favourite because it's such a lovely formula. I don't think I could be any more clear about that now. I've said it so many times before. I'm so sorry for repeating myself, but I just want to make sure that you know it is not the formula of this. The formula is beautiful. It's just the fact that the shade is wrong and uh, yeah. This one is a better shade. Also, you can get another affordable alternative from e.l.f. again in the shade Peach. This one is their take on the colour corrector and this is also lovely, although I do find this slightly a drier formula in the sense that it is not as hydrating as the Conceal and Correct. So if you have dry under eyes, you're probably gonna want to go for the Revolution product. If you have oilier under eyes, the e.l.f. product is the one that I would say would probably be best for you. The next product is a concealer and actually it's a new release concealer and I really don't like it. I am completely underwhelmed by this. However, this is another one of those products that is not right for me, but it may be right for you. There's nothing really wrong with it per se. It's just, I thought this was supposed to be good for mature skin, great pigmentation, spreads easily, blends out lovely, and doesn't sit in dryness. Unfortunately, that was not the case for me. It applied really beautifully, but it emphasized every single last bit of dryness that I have underneath my eyes. And I've been trying this for over a month now and cannot get it to work for me. So if you do have dry under eyes, I would definitely save your money on this one. However, if you do like this product and you have dry skin under your eyes, please let everybody know in the comment section because my opinion is not the only one on this channel. We are a collective and everyone's opinion is valid. This one is from Urban Decay and it's this Stay Naked Quickie Concealer. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong with this. The pigmentation is amazing. I actually bought this in a couple of shades. <laughs> Oh. And it's not exactly the most affordable concealer on the planet. It's not the most expensive, I would say, on the higher end of mid-range. I've tried so hard and yeah, it's just not flattering on me at all. It emphasizes any fine lines that I have underneath my eyes. It doesn't crease, so that is a positive. But yeah, it also emphasizes the dryness. 
It does cover my under eye circles though, so that's also another positive great pigmentation. The applicator is nice, it's a generic doe foot applicator, very easy to apply either to the back of your hand or underneath your eye, and it also has the added extra of having a little brush on the end so you can use this on the go and blend this out underneath the eye. It just, no, it doesn't work for me, but do let me know if it works for you. It's, yeah, it's one of those, it's just not for me, completely underwhelming. If you are wanting a concealer that is full coverage to cover over any dark circles, any pigmentation, a little bit like the Quickie Concealer would be able to give you, but it doesn't emphasize dryness, it doesn't crease, it doesn't emphasize any fine lines or wrinkles, then the one that I would recommend to you is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I have this in three different shades now. I have a really fair shade to sculpt and lift the face. I have my winter shade for underneath the eyes and I also have a more true like skin tone shade for my summer shade but also for hiding any of the imperfections that I have on my skin. This never lets me down. It is super full coverage but it is also quite nice and nourishing but not overly nourishing that it's going to be a little bit too creamy that it's going to break up and separate or crease underneath the eye throughout the day. It's just enough, it's a non-drying formula and I love it absolutely adore it. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter is also a great concealer to mix in with other concealers. I often mix a concoction with the Huda Beauty Faux Filter and my Ride or Die Lancome All Over Concealer. It's just a great combination. Love everything about it. It's a superb concealer and it's also not overly pricey. It is up there but it's more a mid-range product rather than affordable or high-end. These next two products infuriate me because they are that bad. Okay, maybe, is that a little too harsh? Is it Gemma? Maybe with this next one, we'll come on to the one afterwards when we get to it. Anyway, this one came in a PR package and I was incredibly grateful that I got this for free. I'm really glad I didn't buy this myself. The PR package had lots of other products in there that were beautiful and I'll come on to those in a second because the alternative for this product is another one from this brand. This one though, awful. Absolutely awful. This is not for me. I'm just going to show you. This is from Altruist and it's the Anti-Redness and Pigmentation SPF 50. Let's just talk about the positives of this product for a second because there are a few. So firstly, it's got great sun protection in here. The SPF filters are phenomenal. Secondly, this is alcohol and fragrance and essential oil free. And also it's got some really nice hydrating ingredients in there and also antioxidants within the mix as well. That is where it ends. So you would think that the reason of buying an SPF is for the protection and because this has really good protection, job done. Well, hmm, no. So this is a green SPF for colour correction for redness. That's why it's anti-redness. Unfortunately, when this warms to the skin, this turns my skin a beautiful shade of tangerine. It's not pretty and I'll show you this in natural lighting, but that's not the only negative that is a real turn off for me. The second one and the real deal breaker for me is that this sits on the surface of the skin and because it sits on the surface and dries down like a putty, this pills all over the place. If you try and rub the skin after application, if you try and apply anything over the top of this, like makeup after a while, this is going to pill all over the place. And as it pills, you're gonna be losing the SPF protection that you had when you first applied it, or at least that is my conclusion. Regardless of whether you lose the SPF protection or not, I would not want to apply an SPF that's going to pill all over the place and turn me orange. <laughs> it's just not nice. Oh no, 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 no. It's also a really thick formula that's actually quite heavy on the skin. There are so many other SPFs that are nicer than this one. I'm not quite sure who tested this, but um, yeah. 
very disappointing. So the Altruist Anti-Redness is a tinted SPF. I don't have a tinted SPF to share with you that I think is a great alternative. However, I do have an SPF that is absolutely out of this world that's also the same affordability, if not better, than this one. Feels a lot nicer because it's not as thick a formula, so it's nowhere near as heavy. It's actually quite lightweight. And it has the same SPF filters in, so the protection is right up here. The alternative that I would definitely recommend, it's such a beautiful product, is again from Altruist and it's the SPF 50 Face Fluid. So, so nice, well worth the cash. It's affordable, you cannot go wrong with this. It's lovely, but again, this isn't tinted. This will dry clear, so your skin will look exactly the same before and after application. It will just have a little bit more of a glow because you've got something that feels like a moisturiser on your skin. Makeup glides effortlessly over the top of this. It does not pill. It also sinks into the skin rather than sitting on the surface. I love everything about this. Absolutely magical. It's featured in several videos in this month, so it's featured in, I think, my monthly April phase. Favorites. It's also featured in my drugstore Holy Grail products, so I'm not going to wax on about it. I just think this one is fantastic and uh, yeah, the other one, not so much. Moving on to the final product in this video and I've put this last on purpose because this boils my blood. This just doesn't work on any level whatsoever. I, yeah, I don't understand how the reviews of this product are so good. This is a dry shampoo and it's from Olaplex. This is the Olaplex number 4D. This is the Clean Volume Detox Dry Shampoo. Okay, so I use a dry shampoo for three different reasons. Usually I use a dry shampoo after I've dried my hair and styled it. I'll spritz a little bit of dry shampoo in as a preventative method of getting a bit longer out of my hair without my hair going greasy to begin with. I also use a dry shampoo if I've forgotten to use it that way and my hair does start to get a little greasy that you think, mm, could really do with washing my hair today, just gets that extra day out of your hair before you need to wash it because it soaks up the oils. I also use a dry shampoo to volumize my hair, to just add a little bit of texture in there, to add a little bit of boost, just, you know, give it a bit of zhuzh. This does not work on any of those things. It doesn't get rid of oil in my hair, it doesn't prevent oil from coming in my hair, and it doesn't volumize. <laughs> I just don't see the point. Plus, I'm paying a premium for this because you pay a premium for all Olaplex products because they all contain that ride or die ingredient that is supposed to be phenomenal for the hair by amino propyl diglycol demeliate. Sorry about that, it's a little bit of a mouthful and you know, long-winded. That is the ingredient that is trademarked by Olaplex that is supposed to be fantastic for the hair, which is why we don't mind paying a premium for Olaplex products because we know they're gonna do our hair good. So, this not only doesn't do anything for my hair, doesn't volumize, doesn't get rid of any oil, so it's a pretty naff dry shampoo, but also the amount of that special ingredient, that biaminopropyl diglycol demeliate, bit better that time, is so insignificant, it is so small in such small quantities, I just don't see the point in sticking Olaplex on the label because you're not getting very much of that trademarked ingredient. It is literally just above phenoxyethanol within the inky list and legally you are not allowed to put phenoxyethanol any more than 1% of the formula. So even though we can't say exactly how much of the trademarked ingredient is within the formula, we can make an educated guess that it ain't that much. So what are we paying for here? The only thing I like about this product is it's clear and it's weightless. So you spray it on, it's not got a white residue on there. It doesn't have a residue at all, to be honest. I thought I'd got a dud and then I spoke to a friend in just, I just went on a rant 
and she had exactly the same experience as me, so I felt justified <laughs> that I was irate. <laughs> oh gosh, it's awful. Oh my goodness. There are some amazing dry shampoos out on the market though, and I've tried a lot of them. My favourite couple are the Moroccan oil dry shampoo. I have the one for light tones. Um, I have bought Be The One for dark tones because her hair is a lot darker than mine so that she doesn't get that white residue on her hair because that would make her hair look gray. So I bought her the dark tone ones and she really enjoys using that one. It just gives her that extra day of not washing her hair if she gets up in the morning and she doesn't have time to wash it before she goes to school. Also, um, I am absolutely loving and have loved for a really long time the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. Both of these products are similar price points to the Olaplex. Actually, they're more affordable, so for me, better. And they work. They not only volumize, but they also give you the prevention if you want to use it before the oil comes through or it also gets rid of the oil and soaks it up after it's already come through. So it's a good dry shampoo. So dry shampoo, that works. Much better than one that doesn't. So that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've found it helpful in some way. I do apologize for the rant at the end of said video. Although I do feel like I'm justified, just a little bit. It does really annoy me that big brands like Olaplex bring out a product that's quite frankly naff and because of the brand name Olaplex and the fact that we trust it and we trust the ingredients, we all go out and buy it and it, that's just it. We've wasted our cash. If you are one of those people that absolutely love the dry shampoo, please let me know why <laughs> in the comment section because I'm really interested. I would love to know, not saying you're wrong in any way. We all have our own experiences and opinions, but I would really love to know what you like about it and how you get it to work for you because it seriously does not work for me. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about it because I feel myself going red in the face all over again. <sighs> Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.